Hello, welcome. Today in Unit 16, India, we are going to discuss topic stagnation of Indian economy. At the time of independence, the Indian economy was in a very bad shape. It was going through a period of stagnation characterized not only by poverty but also by one of the lowest level of per capita income growth which was approximately 0.5 percent per annum due to the long spell of colonialism. The same feeling were echoed in the first five year plan document. This was primarily because the basic conditions under which an economy can continuously expand were lacking. The impact of modern industrialism in the later half of the 19th century was felt in this country initially through imports of machine made goods from ad abroad which reacted adversely on the traditional pattern of economic life. This also did not create the impulse for development along new lines. The transition that followed was characterized not by the expansion of the industry and a diversification of the economic structure, but by a decay of India's traditional arts, crafts and industries and by an increasing pressure of population on land. The retrogressions led to a decline in productivity per person engaged in agriculture. The result was a continuous increase in unemployment and underemployment and the growth of an attitude of the pathetic contentment on the part of the people. In such an environment, there could be little economic or social progress. Whatever surpluses might have been available in the colonial era were directed towards the purchase of import, partly by better finished products from abroad and partly of equipment for the new transportation system designed primarily in the interests of foreign co commerce. The responsibility for promoting modern commerce and industry came to be concentrated in the hands of certain classes in the urban areas and up to the end of the 19th century the only major large scale industries which had taken root in the country were textiles. Little in attention was paid to improvement of agriculture or to the needs of the rural areas. Now let us start the next topic which is post-independence phase of development. With the attainment of independence, India chose to follow the path of planned social and economic development for which the planning commission was set up on 15th March 1950 under the chairmanship of Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru, the first Prime Minister of India. Since then, Prime Minister of India has been the ex officio chairman of the Planning Commission. Having gone through the background of the Indian economy, we can now analyze the main aims and objectives of the various five year plans of development. First five year plan 1951 to 1956. The first five year plan, in fact, paved the way for the planned economic development of the country. It had two main objectives, first to bring the Indian economy out of the state of stagnation caused by the second world war and partition of the country. Secondly, it initiated the process of all round balanced development of the Indian economy so as to ensure a steady improvement in the living standards of the people over a period of time. The first plan accorded the highest priority to agriculture with special emphasis on rural reconstruction programs and land reforms, including initiation 
of various irrigation and power projects. About 44.6% of the total outlay of rupees 2069 crore was allotted for its development. The plan projected rather optimistically that the saving and investment as a proportion of national income would rise from an estimated 5 to 6 percent in the early 1950s to 20 percent by 1968 to 69 and stabilize at that level thereafter. Aggregate income was expected to double in approximately 20 years and per capita income in 27 years. Second five-year plan 1956 to 1961. In 1954, Parliament de declared that economic policy should achieve a socialistic pattern of society with greater equality in income and wealth in sight. The main aim of the second plan was therefore to promote a pattern of development which could lead to the establishment of the socialistic pattern of society in India. The second plan was aimed at an increase of 25% in the national income, rapid industrialization with particular emphasis on the development of the basic and the heavy industries, large expansion of employment opportunities and reduction of inequalities in income and wealth and a more even distribution of economic power. In the second plan, there was a special emphasis on industrialization and it also aimed at increasing the national income by 11% per annum by 1960 to 1961. The development strategy of economic growth through modern industrialization was continued into the third plan. The third plan is 1961 to 1966. The immediate objectives of third plan which was aimed at self-sufficiency were to secure an increase in national income of over 5% per annum and at the same time ensure a pattern of investment which could sustain this rate of growth during subsequent plan periods. To achieve self-sufficiency in food grains and increase agricultural production to meet the requirements of industry and export. To expand the basic industries like steel, chemical, fuel and power and to establish machine building capacity so that the requirements of further industrialization could be met within a period of 10 years or so mainly from the country's own resources. To utilize fully the manpower resources of the country and ensure a substantial expansion in employment opportunities and to establish progressively greater equality of opportunity and bring about reduction in disparity of income and wealth and a more even distribution of economic power. Therefore, in this strategy of development, the public sector was expected to promote the growth of infrastructural facilities like basic and heavy industries and on the other hand to reduce the con concentration of economic power through the expansion of public on ownership of means of production. The first phase of development over the first three five-year plan period was characterized by fairly sustained growth in per capita income with an 8 to 10 percent compound growth rate of industrial output 3 to 3.5 percent compound growth rate of in food grains output and around 1.75 percent growth rate in per capita income. Thus indicating a study improvement compared to the pre-independence in, in, inter, period. Here we want to close this lecture. We will discuss next plan 
in next lecture thanks for listening